what is dynamic simulation model inside? So again, the same picture, this is the actual supply chain. That's the same guy, which was on the previous picture. So when you do this mapping from the, like, the actual supply chain to the, the, uh, to the dynamic simulation model, you may take into account almost any specific detail of your supply chain, any specific logic of your supply chain. But you have to remember, this is not optimization, this is simulation. As an output of that dynamic simulation model, you'll get the trajectory of the system in time, or how your supply chain behaves in time. So that's why dynamic simulation and network optimization is actually a perfect combination, because of, with a network optimization, you may find a potentially good solutions, and then analyze them further with a dynamic simulation trying to find the one which is, which is best for you, taking into account all that low-level low, low logic. Uh, again, dynamic simulation methods allows you to model a supply chain, again, with any kind of details you may want to, as well as uh, inside for walls logic. So the simulation-based optimization, yeah, there is this term. But simulation-based optimization is fundamentally different to the analytical optimization. The simulation optimizer, this is like the external part to the dynamic simulation model. It measures the output and then generates another set of, uh, set of parameters. So this optimization engine knows nothing about supply chain structure. That's why it may take forever Let's say if you want to address like a large scale problem with the simulation based optimization. But if you just want to find some parameters, I mean, you have just uh, some variation, let's say the inventory policies, let's say from 1000 to 3000. Suddenly you may just vary the, the inventory policy parameters trying to find the, the, best, the best values. This is what you can do. So the simulation-based optimization works with a much, on the much smaller size of problems than analytical one. And I think that that's probably the most important thing. Once you understand how the dynamic simulation works, you always try to put there as much details as you, as you can. Not as you need, but as you can. So, and please remember that too many details actually may result in slower performance because of Sony, the more these lower level details you are taking into account, the slower will be your dynamic, will be your simulation process. We have worked with any logic, uh, the simulation software. Yep. And uh, they also have this agent based modeling. Correct. So, I mean, uh, I suggest I've seen examples where they have done uh, ne even this network simulation using any logic. So will this be different from what any logistics software? Yeah, good, good question. Thank you. Yeah, uh, any logic is a general purpose dynamic simulation software. And basically, yes, you may model the everything as well as supply chain. But you'll have to do that from the scratch. Uh, our department, before we, start, we started development, uh, any logistics. Uh, we were responsible for consulting services in our company. We do not do this anymore. But we did the consulting, and the most of that consulting was related to supply chain. So I should say that the time difference in like the poor dynamic simulation, if you use just a poor any logic, and uh, uh, for example, ALX, that's more than 10, 10, 10 times. Uh, for example, the probably one of the, the shortest project in supply chain, if you develop the supply chain in any logic, took us about six months. The same project in ALX, then that's less than one month. Well, close to one month, but even a bit less. So that's the time difference. And so in ALX, that's much, you already have much more uh, just from the, from the beginning because of uh, the dynamic simulation model you built from the scratch, you always will have the some I don't want to say limitation. You, you'll have there only the things 
which you just put there. Let's say you put there some statistics, you will have it there. But if you want to look at another statistics, you will have to add that manually there, right? In ALX, it's already there. Yeah, this is just one example. Yeah, the, again, the difference is time saving. Uh, <coughs> yeah. uh, but as you say that uh, in any logistic, we don't know what is the uh, assumption or methodology behind the like we use an analogy because let's say we ha we do the the modeling using the analogy, so we know uh, uh, what is the logic or what is the logic expression that we are using it. Is that uh, sorry? Uh, in any logic, uh, when we are developing a model, we understand uh, the logic expression, and that uh, when the model cannot uh, resulting something that we need, or maybe it's not feasible, then we can uh, make proper change. But in uh, any logistic, uh, we don't. Uh, we think this is kind of a black box, right? So we don't know uh, what behind uh, in in the in the that black box, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'll just show you, but okay. yeah, briefly. So, LX has like a predefined supply chain model behind, which you may modify using tables, but it also allows you to do extensions. So, if you want to add some custom behavior, which is not predefined in LX, so you may extend the objects with, uh, with any logic and then plug them back to LX. Okay. Yeah, I'll just yeah I'll show you how, how it works. So uh, I want to show you a couple of um, dynamic simulation scenarios. Don't see sorry uh, distribution network analysis. Yeah, th this one. Yeah. Uh, this is a simple simulation. I mean, this is this is just simulation. This is uh, not any like a comparison. You d we, we just run the simulation at, and look at the output. So I'll run it a bit faster. Maybe run. So you see th those things which are moving. This is actually the trucks which deliver the goods. So that's the statistics which is collected as a as an output of the dynamic simulation. So. Um, uh, probably I have to use magnify again. No, okay. Is, is that okay? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I may just extend it. So, for example, this is a service level. By the way, it's called ELT. ELT means expected lead time. Or, uh, uh, yeah, it's, or another way to, to say it probably on time delivery. So if you deliver your goods within the specified time, then that's like a 100% service level. If you are late, then it's decreasing. So, uh, and here we have a legend, so we may iterate through different uh, customers you have, oh, that's facilities, and uh, estimate the service level for uh, all of them. So, um, the same view, but as a table. Then let's go to inventory. So you may look at the inventory dynamics, again, for different facilities. So the same, we have a legend and may iterate through all the uh, facilities we have in our supply chain. So I actually like that chart a lot. Uh, again, uh, that's the uh, average available inventory in days. It means, uh, let's say, how much inventory uh, you had at, uh, at your warehouse, how much days. Let's say in this case, yeah? So, uh, for example, the... Uh, uh, for uh, 4,000 in 4,000 uh, in 4,000 cases, that amount of inventory you had at, at, at your warehouse, 
in that amount of cases, so that amount of inventory you had, uh, you had at your warehouse, and so on. So basically, these histograms allows you to analyze what, for example, capacity you may need. Not a throughput, the capacity, the real capacity of your warehouse. <coughs> Capacity, right? Yeah, for example, yep. So that's uh, in other statistics on capacity. This, for example, peak capacity, like the maximum capaci capacity which was ever requested by the dynamic simulation. So, uh, don't see what, what is written. Uh, backlog, yeah. Backlog orders, yes. Sorry, since this is a dynamic simulation, you may analyze. Okay, how, what, what's the size of your backlog and the dynamic of that backlog. So solely you may look at the profit and loss statement. So you may, uh, sorry, uh, well, bre break even, yeah. You may look, you may find out a break even point, let's say when your revenue will become higher than your cost in that case. So you may look at the profit and loss statement and you may uh, detail that by each facility you have in your supply chain. So, um, yeah, um, for example, here we may say, okay, I want that statistics per item. See, so, and you see now you will have the cost per each facility you have in, in the supply chain. Well, fulfillment, again, don't confuse with the service level because sometimes when you are talking about network optimization, there are two things which people confuse, say, the service level and fulfillment. Fulfillment basically means uh, that how much demand you will be able to satisfy. Service level means if you are able to fulfill the agreement with your customer that you will, let's say, deliver in time, for example, or each time when customer comes to the, to, when customer comes to the shop, you have this good at your retail store or warehouse or somewhere else. So again, it's different with the fulfillment. Is it clear? Yeah. Um, for example, yeah, the, that, that's the fleet which was used, like the average number of different kind of fleets we have, and that system we have a container, lorry, and truck. So, uh, yeah, and basically here we may add any statistics you may want to. So we have a, uh, about 10 different groups of the statistics as well as you may define your own if you want to. So in each group we have a number of different statistics which provides you the very detailed view on what's going on inside your supply chain. Um, so, uh, the next example I want to show you, this is a risk analysis. And before I show you the example, I want, I want to explain you the, the idea. Come on. What is risk? Yeah, let's say this is their supply chain, your supply chain. So, sometimes something may happen there. For example, the supplier may just stop operating some because of something, strike, whatever else. The path may be just broken. So the distribution center again may, may, may experience some problems. So uh, also you, there are some stochastic which is associate, associated with the lead time, with the demand variability. So, and when you do risk analysis, you estimate what we call performance impact. So you estimate how this risk may influence your service level, revenue, total cost, and so on. And also another important parameter is the time to recover. Basically it means if something happens in your supply chain, how much time it will take for your supply chain to recover. And then what you do what you may do, you may draw the chart like that, uh, like the performance impact, like low, high, low, high, and uh, then analyze what kind of risks you have in your system. For example, it may be some 
operational risks like the probability of uh, bullwhip effect um, in your system, or it may be a disruption risk, which means like the frequency of that risk probably low, but the impact may be very high. For example, if there is an earthquake somewhere, yeah, that's uh, this is a disruption risk, which may lead to a ripple effect. Ripple effect means that something happens, let's say, you know, some earthquake you know, in Thailand, for example, or something, yeah, or uh, happened. Uh, yeah, uh, and then because of the problem at one facility, it started to propagate to other facilities you know, with, with the time. And, and that's like, again, this is like a ripple, ripple wave, yeah? So, again, that's just uh, some basic information, again, about that risk analysis. So, uh, yeah, escape here, please, yeah. How it works in, in Alex. Uh, yeah, this one, okay. Oh, oh. Risk analysis. This one. So we have a special experiment for the risk analysis. So uh, here you may define the number of replications. Since you have some statistics, oh, stochastic, sorry, inside your supply chain, you have to run it multiple times in order to see how your output will be affected by the variability of the input parameters. So also here you may define what means the failure for you. For example, if your service level drops below 96%, in this case, that means the failure. If your service level recover to 98%, it means you, you already recovered. it. See, I will not run that example because since it requires some replications, it, it, it may take some time, but uh, I will show you the result around uh, just yesterday. So, uh, I don't see, sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, for example, this is how the uh, service t target level was, uh, service level target level was changing. So. That's, that means that everything is okay until that point. Then something happens in, in the supply chain at that point. So it happens, then you recover, then it, you again go down and so on. So, and you may see how your service level will be affected by that risk. So actually, if you look at that uh, time, uh, time to recover, you see, uh, for some facilities, it will say no recovery. It means you will never recover after that uh, events, random events, which, which happens in, in your supply chain. Um, also, you may look at total cost characteristics, again, how it will be changed with the time. So, uh, again, that's this uh, uh, total cost by replication. Again, replication means one run of the dynamic simulation model. Could you please extend it? Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, and you may see how those metrics may vary from replication to replication, as well as you may look at what we call like best mean worse. So uh, this is this chart. So that's like the Worst scenario, that's the best one, and this is mean. So, uh, yep. Um, another dynamic simulation I want to, yeah, I'm actually trying to show you the examples which I think should be should be interesting to you because the dynamic simulation is pretty powerful approach. So many things you may measure there. And I'm just trying to show you the things which probably from my again point of view make sense to you. So if you want to look at something else, just, just let me know or 
at least at the end of the presentation, yeah, uh, uh, we can show you more examples. The risk analysis which you showed, uh, it works only on the uh, target service levels? Or is there anything else that takes into consideration? Is there any other factors that we define? Yeah, you may, um, uh, you may define your uh, own metrics there too. Uh, but they, they, they are all, you see, uh, in case of risk analysis, they are always linked somehow to service level. That's why the service level, like the, the primary target, and then you may link to that service level, total cost or any other parameter if you want to. So are you defining the risk somewhere in the model? Uh, yes, yeah. You are defining, right? Yeah, I can show it later, yeah, because we have a special table, events, where you may define all the just uh, random events which may happen in your system. Yep. So while you are defining the risk, you would define a boundary condition for your service level for a risk to come in and a recovery situation as well. So do you define rules which lead to that recovery? For example, let's say your uh, supplier is down, building on the example of Thailand. Do you define a rule for an alternate supplier and then calculate the time of recovery? Yeah, you may, um, well, okay, uh, uh, um, could you please switch back to Alex? Then, okay, I'll show this table. Um, this is uh, input data. So, could you please, events. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, events table. So yeah, uh, can you see it or sh should I use magnifier? Can you see it? Yes. Okay, good. See, you see here you may define different types of events. In this model we have like the Thames uh, flooding, some termination of the agreement, all those things. And actually those events may be linked to each other. For example, if we want to say that another event may happen only after this one, we may just go here and say that this one uh, will happen only after flooding of the, uh, of the river. So, and this way we may do that connection. So you may say, okay, if something happened in my supply chain, then probably it will trigger the sequence of another events in the, in the supply chain. So, and that's where you may just link them to, to each other. You cannot calculate that with a network optimization, with, with analytical methods. What's the difference here? So in LX model, you have like a cash account for your supply chain system. So then, Then, uh, yeah, and you pay supply chain cost from your cash account. Then, what do you have? You have payment terms with your customers. So, one customer may pay you within, let's say, 15 days, plus, minus something. Another customer may pay you within 45 days, and so on. Then, all those payment terms forms account receivables. This is the money you expect to get. And once you get paid, it's added to, to the cash. But at the same time, you also have to pay your suppliers. So you have account payable in, in your system, so in your supply chain system. We also have payment terms for, for, our, uh, for our suppliers and to pay them. If we don't go, if we don't have enough money, we just go to this pig and get some money from them and pay them interest. So, yeah, this is how it works, and at the end, what you may see, you may analyze your, your cash dynamics. So, yeah, could you please switch to the uh, example to Alex? <coughs> Yeah. Again, th this is a. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't show you the, the data, but okay. So, this is a. 
simple model uh, which uh, um, to, to show you how this this uh, this uh, cast to surf works so I'll just run it a bit faster yeah thank you Andre yeah uh, for example here, here, here we may look at that um, cash dynamics I mean uh, in uh, for example, in, in our facility in China, how it works. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll do it, yeah. So, how it works, yeah, you may see that this is the loan with, with enter, interest which we had to pay to, to the bank. This is the cash we are getting. So, uh, we may look also at more detailed statistics you see this is cash less loan with with an interests and in China you may see that we are below zero for actually pretty for well more than 180 days see so, again th this is like a more detailed statistics on the same see so, again the basic idea behind this cash to flows and it the, the idea actually of that is coming from, from our customers because sometimes it's pretty challenging for them to calculate all that things to understand how much cash they, they will need at the end of the, let's say, quarter or month to pay all, those expen all, all the expenses they, they have so, and how much loan they, they will actually need at some point. So even without randomness, it makes sense for them because it's difficult to calculate even if you don't have randomness but have different payment terms it's already pretty challenging but once you have also inside a randomness it's even more difficult to do all those things without well it you cannot even do that without dynamic simulation because you have to first simulate that to collect all the statistics and see uh, how much cash you will have and you will need at each point of your product cycle production cycle for example uh, yep. Can we add an even on this? Yeah, so Let, Let's say uh, invest, uh, add another investment like buying trucks or everything. So, so we can. Uh, yes, yeah, we can do it. And also, too. let's say uh, the bank is closed at the earlier date instead of. Like that. Say again, the bank is closed? The bank closed uh, date is earlier than that is expected. Yeah, we. Um, I understand. So uh, we actually implemented initially. We uh, implemented some simple. Uh, well, no, I don't want to say simple. No, no that's probably the most commonly used uh, ways how you work with a bank. Mm -hmm. But again, since Alex is extendable, you may always add your own okay. logic you, you behind the that. Same uh, even menu that you saw previously. Yep. Um, yeah, let's, could you please switch to back to presentation? Yep. Uh, how do you calculate the uh, uh, cash that is coming into the cash account? Because uh, I saw that you have a profit and loss uh, and the revenue is counted based on the product price and the product sale to the customer. Yeah, correct. But this is a supply chain cost and usually uh, in factory supply chain cost is a reimbursement instead of uh, the customer pays the product, pays when you buy the product instead of. Yeah, so um, in ALX, what do you define? Yeah, you, you define the purchasing price, I mean the price for, for the end customer. And once customer get the product, uh, the customer pays the, the money based on that payment terms. So, then as to the warehouse, so you may define the cost associated with the different operations. For example, processing costs. So once warehouse get the pallet from, I don't know, unload the pallet from the track, the cost will be added to your supply chain cost. So that's processing cost. Then you may have like, a, you also have a carrying cost, so like inventory handling cost. So we, we actually have a number of different costs associated with the factory as well as a distribution center. So, and you may define them in order, uh, in order to have a proper calculation of, of that cash to serve 
This is what we call. So, and again, all this cost, it's incurred only when you actually use the resource or do something, do some operations inside your supply chain. This is not, let's say, the cost you pay per month. Yeah, so, well, certainly there is a cost you pay per month, like a warehouse rent. You may say, I pay this rent per month, and then it will be calculated each month. But the processing costs are like inventory carrying costs and so on. So it's calculated for each day. Yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yep. Yeah. So if you want any, uh, please ask for the microphone to ask questions. Well, uh, now let's come back to that wonderful pyramid I like a lot. See, uh, if we try to put here the methods which we just dis discussed, the dynamic simulation and network optimization. That's the picture we'll have. At the top, we have analytical methods, again, which always require some simplifications to be able to, uh, to be used. And then the more details you take into account, the more need for the dynamic simulation you will have. Uh, another interesting Conclusion from that, that's actually the number of opportunities for innovations has exactly the same shape as, as this one because of the same reason. The more details you take into account, the more need for the dynamic simulation you will have and the more, let's say, problems or things you will be able to consider. And and just another way to say the same, actually, the more linear you are trying to be, the more need for the dynamic simulation you will, you will have. Again, because of this, uh, they, you always start with analytical methods, because of if you never do any kind of optimization in your supply chain, certainly you will start with that part. But once you did it, you will find out that those methods does not give you much because of you already just implemented that, this as a process. But you always want to improve, and you see that there is a space to improve, but you just don't know how to test it, how to understand which way to go. And here, dynamic simulation helps. So, now I have actually four examples for you to test if I managed to explain you what I wanted. So, if I'm not, so you should not blame you, you should, well, you should blame me for that. So, let's try. So, problem, so we have aggregated demand, we have a transportation cost, cubic meters per kilometers. What we want to find out, the areas or locations to place distribution centers. So, which methods you would use, like the Analytical or dynamic simulation? <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> so, next, if we add to that possible locations for the facilities, let's say the cities or places where we can put the facilities. So we add railroads and we add, add side throughputs. So, and we want to have a configuration of supply chain ranked by cost, analytical or dynamic simulation. Yeah, yeah, correct. This is analytical optimization. Then I add site capacity, not a throughput. I add inventory policies and sourcing policies. And what I want, I want to find a configuration of supply chain ranked by service level. Correct, but not completely. Because of first, you will use analytical methods to figure out the possible options. Then, you add some details like inventory policies and sourcing policies, run dynamic simulation with those best set of scenarios selected on the previous set, and find the configuration 
which, which works, uh, which is better for you. Great. Number two, omnichannel. You have aggregated demand, production throughput, transportation cost, cubic meters per kilometer. Again, so the result supply chain configuration ran by cost. Analytical or dynamic simulation? <laughs> Correct. This is, you may use GFA or network optimization depending on what you want to. But then, omnichannel is pretty complex, right? So you, uh, you have to consider how it actually have to work inside. I mean, the processes probably are the key here because the processes are influenced a lot on your supply chain. So to <coughs> model that supply chain, so you have to take into account this inside forwards processes, side capacity, working hours, many other things. And you want to analyze how your supply chain should operate. So you want to analyze things like service level, inventory, uh, inventory dynamics, utilization, and so on. So dynamic simulation or network optimization? Dynamics. Correct. Dynamic simulation. I, I, I'm, I'm actually, I feel, my, uh, I feel like happy because of, yeah, I feel that, yeah, at least I managed to explain that part. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what will happen with the, uh, with the next example. Risk analysis. Operational risks. So we have demand changes, lead time changes, supply reliability, some probability of strike. So we want to check the supply chain robustness, service level, cost, utilization. Correct. Disruption risk. Correct. So uh, this one is actually a bit challenging. We'll see. Uh, well, we have products flows. We have transportation cost, flow processing cost, labor and facility cost. So we want to do this uh, budget and cost to serve. <laughs> So actually, in that case, you may use just Excel because if you have flows, it's, uh, you just pay like $1,000 per, per one cubic meters of something, right? So you, you operate with the flows here. You don't need any optimization at all. So you may just use poor, poor Excel to do all those calculations. So uh, let's introduce some time-based metrics. So, for example, the resources cost, which depends on time, so operational cost, handling cost, and we also have an idle cost. So, and we want to do activity-based budget. So it, it means that you want to calculate this cost, yeah, which is associated with the, each resource and the time, uh, well, and how much this resource was used. I see some confusion on your faces. <laughs> yeah, it's good, actually, yeah. Because in some cases, in some rare cases, if everything is linear in your system, I mean, if this, you may say that the, you always pay like the same resource cost per month, and it's always the same, then, yeah, you may use some analytical methods to do this because the, all the dependencies are linear. But in the most cases, the dynamic simulation will be the right approach to go. Now, if you add those payment terms, randomness, production processes, and cash to serve, yeah, obviously, yeah, dynamic simulation. Yeah, thank you, really. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I really, yeah, I'm glad that, yeah, I managed to explain all those things to you. Um, now a few slides about any logistics. So I think that you already understand the main advantages of the product, but just want to summarize them. So what is any logistics? So any logistics is the software to design, optimize, and experiment with your supply chain. So inside it has both, uh, like analytical methods, CPLEX, for example, also some heuristics for Greenfield analysis, and it has uh, dynamic simulation methods inside too, which is powered by 
any logic engine. So yeah, analytical methods are powered by IBM, uh, by Cplex from IBM. So, uh, and if you look again at that pyramid of supply chain analytics problems and put here the methods or tools which are used at different levels of abstraction, you'll find out that the most of the tools are work at that area. While ALX works just everywhere thanks to Cplex and, uh, and uh, uh, dynamic simulation capabilities. So, um, usage scenario. Um, let's say we have a supply chain problem in the real world. So certainly, in some cases, actually, you may do the experiments in the real world trying to find the best configuration of your supply chain. But in the most cases, it doesn't work. And what you do, you just abstract from the, oh, sorry, not abstract. So you create the model in the software, in this case, uh, any logistics. So I showed here exactly the same pictures, just trying to, uh, to, to explain that actually with the dynamic simulation, so you may take into account almost all the details you have here. Then what you do, you do some experiments with this model, find the solution, and then deploy the solution to the real world. Again, it may be like Oracle, some inventory management system, it may be some investing decisions, um, and so on. And uh, just would like to underline then that once again, this is a free risk-free environment. You should not pay anything for the experimenting there. Uh, let's come back to your question. Uh, any logistic simulation capabilities. So we have like the customers, uh, warehouses, distribution centers, factories, suppliers. All those objects are communicating with, with each other. So, and what you can do, if you want to change the behavior of one of the objects, so you may open this object in any logic, modify this, and then plug it back to, to ALX. This way, you may customize this model in any way you want to. <coughs> Integration with IT infrastructure. ALX is based on Java, so it has open API, so you may easily build, uh, integrate any logistics into your IT inf infrastructure. It may read the data from the databases you have or the system you have in, inside your company and then use ALX to do some experiments, visualization and so on. Or you may even run the ALX from the common prompt and then uh, export the data to your BI tools and use those BI tools to make the decisions. Uh, how ALX works? Very basic slide. So we have the scenarios with the initial data which you already saw. So then with those data, you may do, with those uh, scenarios, you may do the experiments. Uh, you may do the analytical experiments as well as the dynamic simulation experiments. The results of the experiments may be converted to another scenario. And then you may experiment with this scenario further. Um, so, and at the end, you use all those results to make your business decisions. Again, that's just a very brief explanation of how it works. Uh, key differentiators, again, ju just repeating that. Uh, yeah, ALX integrates both dynamic simulation and um, analytical optimization. And, uh, uh, and because of that, it allows you to do much more precise analysis of your supply chain. So it allows you to do inside for walls modeling. For example, uh, you may add your factory or distribution center, how those objects work inside and see how this logic influences your supply chain level. Uh, so it's, question. yeah? So with the standard any, logi any logistics uh, functionality, you cannot uh, model the inside the forward process, correct? You need to do it in any logic and add it using the extension. Uh, yes, we, to, to, do, to do inside for walls mod modeling, yes, you have to do extension. Yeah. 
uh, then you, measure, you can measure your supply chain because if you are talking about analytical optimization, all those models, analytical models, they're always built around one criteria. In the most cases, this is cost. If you want to measure something else like inventory dynamics, risk, uh, service level, many other metrics, you actually have to build just another model if you want to, to do this. So while in dynamic simulation, everything measurable, right? Because the, you just simulate how your supply chain works and you may measure everything. And uh, uh, the last but not the least, visualization. Visualization, this is what helps you to verify your model. So you may look at this animation and see if it's correct or not. If it, if it works as you expect it or not. So we think that the visualization is very important. So, and I'll just show you a couple of examples. You know, you would see uh, how you may use ALX 